Jay Mahamaya Ki Jay, Bole Baba Ki Jay. In our last discourse, we heard one of the warriors of uh, King Sumba, the demon king, go to the Divine Mother and tell her that he understood her words to mean that she wanted to marry and be one with the King Sumba. And now we'll hear her response. This is chapter 25. Vedic Vyasa said, O oh, King Janamajaya, when Durma Lokhana, the messenger, sees speaking, the Devi Kalika made a wild laughter and began to speak sweetly thus, O oh, stupid one, skilled in flattery, you know only how to use jugglery of words like an actor. Do you think that your ends will be served if you speak only sweet words? This can never be. O oh, dull-witted one, fight now. There is no need of useless words. You are strong and have been sent by the wicked demon king with great a great army. This Devi, out of wrath, will kill you. Sumba and Nishumba and all the commanders with her arrows as well, and will then return to her abode. Where is that stupid Sumba? And where is this Devi, the great enchantress of the world, their marriage in this world is entirely out of question and can never take place. O oh, dull wedded wind, one, what do you think that a lion is becoming very passionate would make an ordinary jackal her husband? Or would she, or she elephant, prefer a, a donkey? Or would a heavenly cow like a bison? Go to Shumba and the Shumba and tell truly to them, fight or go instant tea lead to Patala. O fortunate one, the demon Durma Lokana, hearing thus the Kalika's words, became very angry and spoke with reddened eyes, O oh, ugly one, I will slay thee, and this lion infatuated with pride in battle, and take this fair one to the king. O oh, Kali, I have not been able to do this simply, it would break our amorous love sentiments or co O quarrelsome one, otherwise I would have undoubtedly slain thee just now with my sharpened arrows tipped with irons. Hearing thus, Kalika said, O oh, fool, why do you boast vainly? This is not the religion of a hero with bows and arrows in their hands. Shoot your arrows with all your might. I will send you to the realm of death. Hearing the deity's words, the demon warrior caught hold of his very strong bow and began to shoot arrows after arrows at Kalika. Indra and the other devas came out to see the fight on their best cars in the celestial space and shouted victory to the devi and thus eulogized her. Then a deadly fight ensued between them and with arrows, axes, clubs, and other weapons. Kalika cut off all of the, the arrows from the onset and all the that carried the chariot by her arrows and then broke his chariot and began to laugh repeatedly. Then the warrior uh, became very angry, mounted on another chariot and began to shoot deadly arrows at Kalika Devi again. And, but she too cut off those arrows into pieces before they reached her and shot arrows after arrows on the demons in quick secession. Thousands of his soldiers near to him were killed. The, the horses and the charioteers were killed. The chariot was broken. She cut off their arrows by her swift serpent-like arrows and blew her conch shell. The deva, seeing this, became very glad. The warrior, seeing himself to place from his chariot, took up with anger his very strong weapons and came near to the chariot of the Devi. Then the demon, ter terrific like death, began to abuse the Devi and said, Oh, ugly, tawny-eyed Kali, I will kill thee just now. Thus saying, he suddenly went near to her, and when he was about to throw his weapon on her, the Ambika Devi first burnt him to ashes simply by her loud shout in defiance. 
Seeing Durma look kind of burnt to ashes, his soldiers became panic-stricken and fled away immediately, crying, Oh, Father, oh, Father, the Devas saw this and gladly showered from high heaps of heavenly flowers on the Devis. O oh, Queen, the battleground then assumed a dreadful appearance. At some places, the slain demons, at others, the horses, at other places, elephants, and at some places, the the other animals slayed scattered on the field. The herons, crows, vultures, uh, and jackals and other carnivorous animals began to dance wildly and clamor hideously at the sight of the dead bodies lying on the field. The Ambika Devi, then quitting the field, went to a distant place and blew her conch shell so furiously and terribly that Shumba heard that terrific noise while he was sitting in his own residence. At the next moment, he saw the demon forces had retreated and they were coming there crying. Some of them were besmeared with mud all over their bodies. Some had got their feet, had, had lost their feet. Some their arms cut asunder. Some were devoid of eyes. Some had their backs broken and some had their waists broken. Some got their necks broken and some were going on, on feebly. Seeing then the Sumba and the Sumba asked them, where is Dermara Lakana? Why have you all retreated? And why have you not brought that lady? Where are the other forces? Who has blown this horrible conch shell? Oh fools, inform me quickly and truly all these things. The soldier said, O oh, king, Durmara Lokana has been slain by Kalika. She has destroyed all the soldiers and has done extraordinary deeds, O king. Knowing the blowing of the conch shell that has caused terror in the hearts of the demons and has enhanced the joy of the devas and is being resounded in the celestial space, is that done by the Ambika Devi? I will kill this Ambika. O oh Lord, when the Devi broke the chariot of Dharma Lakana by the multitude of her arrows and killed the horses and at last slew him himself, when all the forces were slain by her who appeared like a lion, and when the rest of the army retreated, the Deva, seeing all these, were very much glad and showered flowers from the celestial sky. O king, we have come to a perfect conclusion that we will not get the victory. Now consult with your expert ministers and do what is needful. O king, the supreme goddess of the universe is waiting there alone to fight with you without any help of any forces. This is a great wonder to us. O king, intoxicated with their power, that lady, fearless, is reigning there, taking her stand on the lion. All these seem wondrous to us, O King. Consult with your counselors, and out of the four policies, peace, fight, retreat, or remaining neutral, accept what is best. O tormentor of the foes, true, there are no forces with the Devi, but the whole host of the Devas will take up her cause in crisis, there is no doubt. And Dutta and Hadi, Shiva and Vishnu, both will come and assist her. Now the guardians of the several quarters, the Lopalas, are waiting by her side in the celestial space. O tormentor of the gods, know that the Gandharvas, Kinaras, and human beings all will come timely and help her too, O king. We guess all these. But that lady does not want the assistance of anyone, nor does she expect it from anybody that, would, that they would do the work for her. You must know this certainly, that she alone can destroy this whole universe, what to speak of the demons only. O oh, highly fortunate one, knowing all these, do as you like. It is the duty of the servants to speak beneficial and at the same time true words with moderation. Shumba, the tormentor of others, hearing these words, asked his younger brother in private, O oh, brother, this Kalika has slain today our great warrior with his forces. The great, the few retreated and came over to me. Now the Ambika Devi, puffed up with pride, is blowing her conch shell. 
Brother, the two ways to time are knowable even to the wise. The grass becomes a thunderbolt, and the thunderbolt becomes like grass and powerless. Know thus the course of destiny, O fortunate one. Now I ask you, what are we to do now? Are we to entertain yet the desire of enjoying Ambika? Or are we to fly away from her? Or are we to fight on? Say quickly, though younger, in times of difficulty, I consider you as my elder. Hearing thus the Sumba's words, Miss Shumba said, O oh, sinless one, fight or taking refuge in a fort is not reasonable. To fight with the lady is the best course. Excuse me. Flight or taking refuge in a fort is not reasonable. To fight with this lady is the best course. I will take the best generals and soldiers with thee and will slay that lady and quickly return. And if they be strong and prove it otherwise, then after my death, think out again and again and do what it is best. Hearing thus the younger brother's words, Shumba said, you better wait. Let Chanda and Munda go to the battle, surrounded with forces. To kill a hare is not necessary to send an elephant. This is a very trifling matter. The two great warriors, Chanda and Munda, will freely be able to slay her. Thus saying his younger brother, to his younger brother, the king Shumba addressed Chanda and Munda, who were waiting before him thus, O oh, Chanda, O oh, Munda, Take your forces and go quickly to kill that shameless lady puffed up with pride. O oh, pair of warriors, kill that tawny-eyed Kalika in the battle and bring that Ambika Devi here quickly. Do this great service, and if that haughty Ambika be unwilling to come here, though taken as a captive, then kill that Durga, the ornament of the battle too, by sharp arrows. Here ends the 25th chapter of the 5th book on the killing of Dhurma Lokana in the Srima Devi Bhagavatam, the Mahapurana of 18,000 verses by Maharishi Veda Vyasa. Che Mahamaya Ki Che Bodhi Baba Ki Che Vishveshvari Mati Ki Che Hare Kandeshvari Mati Ki Che.